There has been a lot of discussion about the key of major and specifically the single elimination aspect of it. So I kind of wanted a few people have asked me my opinion. And uh, this is certainly a, a fairly heated discussion going on in the scene over the past uh, week or two. So I kind of wanted to talk about some of it. So initially, we pretty much knew that Kiev was going to be single elimination because when they announced it, they announced that it would be four days, just like Boston. And now that the format has been confirmed through the Battle Pass compendium part, uh, it, it's definitely come up a lot. Is single elimination the best format? What are the pros and cons? And why exactly might Valve be doing single elimination after running double elimination majors and TIs for so long? So first we can look at kind of some of the concerns with single elimination because that's mostly what's being discussed right now. And the big one with Kiev invites looming is that with single elimination, specific placing isn't actually determined. Um, you have the, the bottom eight are all just 9th through 16th, and then in the top eight, which is usually pretty heavily used to decide where the invites are going to come from, places 5th through 8th, there's no distinction from them, and there's no distinction between 3rd and 4th place. This is both bad kind of for prize money, but also for determining team rankings when you want to think about invites for the next season. And then uh, another obvious one is that teams have to play flawlessly. Dota is a game of adaptation, and uh, letting giving teams that cushion of the lower bracket does uh, give us that that adaptation. So you you lose, and the ability to come back and be even stronger is something that's sort of a hallmark of Dota. So that is a downside of single elimination. And then another one that I think is really important is there's an inherent um, disadvantage or advantage to the other team. With the current format, you have both the semifinals, best of threes, played on the same day as the finals. So the team that plays first gets an entire series to rest, study their opponents and strategize, whereas the team that plays second has a little bit of break time and then they're shuffled immediately into the grand finals. So they don't get the same strategy time. So the first playing team does get an advantage there, which is unfortunate. And then last, the group stages that we saw in Boston were incredibly meaningless. So uh, single elimination, if not done properly, gives you group stages that are worthless. So there's a few solutions to deal with this. And uh, the first one, importantly, improve the group stage format. And the way to do this is to kind of change up uh, how the group stages were done as compared to Boston. In Boston, it was four groups of four teams. And uh, the first place in one group played the fourth place in another, I believe, random group. And if you have one game go slightly wrong, you end up with situations like EG playing TI Champions Wings in the first round, which really shouldn't be happening. Uh, there wasn't a lot of incentive to do well in the group stages. You didn't really get rewarded that much. Uh, so if you reworked the groups, you could give some kind of reward if you could see teams properly. So the first option for uh, this different group stage would be to do 16 teams. If you do a best of one format, it's a lot of games. I think it's 240 and uh, it reveals a lot of strategy. It might be more exhausting than what group stages should be, but the bonus is that you get really accurate seeding. The only tournament I could think of that used this format was DAC back in 2015, and the group stage took several days, uh, but you ended up with really accurate seeding first through 16th place, um, which makes going into the bracket a little better. So if we were to go into a bracket here, you would have your standard one place 16, two place 15, so on and so forth. And this also addresses that advantage of um, the first best of three match that day, having the greater advantage. So if you seed it so that the first place, if they go through the bracket, will end up playing the first best of three of the day, you are giving them that advantage that they got all the way back from the group stage as coming out on top. And so that, that would be 16 teams. You get really good seeding from that. It's an okay system. It would deal with some things. Now the other option is um, two groups of eight. And you can either do the best of one round robin within these groups, which is I think 112 games total. And that would seed teams first through eighth and then have first place play eighth place and so on forward on either side of the bracket. 
And then the other interesting option would be to do something like a single elimination best of three mini tournament. And that would give you four teams in the bottom, and then you could have a decider match between third and fourth place. And then so you would have a first, second, third, fourth place, and then four bottom teams. What's really interesting to me for this is what you could do is have the first place team pick from the bottom four of the enemy groups. I think this would really reward doing well in the group stages because instead of saying first place must play eighth place, you're giving first the preference out of four teams for who they can play against, really making the group stages matter quite a bit. So uh, it's there's a lot of incentive to win and you get rewarded for winning, so that would be nice. And then of course we still do have the, the slight advantage for whoever plays the first best of three. And I don't know how this would work scheduling wise, I don't know if this is reasonable, but a thought I had was to add a third place decider match that would help with correctly ranking teams, and it would also give a little more rest time to the team who played second on the finals day so that they could have a little more time to strategize and get ready for the grand finals. Unfortunately, finals days are already very long, so I'm not sure if a third place decider match is a legitimate solution. And of course, there are a lot of other ways to run these group stages, but I think that the Boston method really wasn't effective. I don't think the group stages meant anything. So I think we will see Valve adjust group stages to some different format that hopefully will help seed teams better. So there's also a lot of benefits to the current format. And this is what nobody is talking about. And I really, I want to see people talking about this. There are a lot of great things about single elimination. So one, which I love, every team starts out in the upper bracket. People are complaining about single elimination and teams only getting one shot. And uh, well, think about TI. Eight teams started out in the lower bracket. And not only that, it was best of one lower bracket. So that means you have essentially single elimination games that are only best of one. So if single elim is bad, imagine best of one single eliminations. So this gives every team essentially an equal chance as weighted by the seeding from the group stages, uh, which I, I think makes for better competition. Also, we always talk about what's best for the teams, what's best for the players, what will determine the best team, but ultimately, Valve wants to make money. This is a company, they like money, they want to make money, so I think that we have to consider what is best for a spectator point of view, what will draw the most numbers, what will make the game look most impressive, what will have people spend the most money on the game. If you have this shorter, more condensed tournament, viewing schedules are much easier. It's easier to take time off from work, it's easier to stay up late and adjust your sleeping schedule, and in addition to that, the games matter more. The opportunity cost for missing a game is so much higher when it's single elimination. When you know that a team can lose and just play again the next day, what's going to make you tune into that match? But if it's single elimination, it drives viewership higher, it makes games mandatory to watch, and this is better for your product if you can do that. So that's another reason that single elimination is very good for Valve and essentially good for us too. The bigger the community is, the more uh, money Valve makes, the more goes back into the scene and the more it stabilizes. Another thing to consider, which I think people forget about, the setup between games takes a long time. You need filler content or you need wait screens. Your tournament, so four best of ones, as compared to two best of threes. Two best of threes probably takes less time um, if it were to be the four games and have an equal amount of games, just because the setup between teams takes so long. You lose viewers when you go to those wait screens, you lose people who are just waiting for games to happen, and your tournament takes so much longer, even if you're just doing best of ones to have a double elimination style bracket. And then this last point is what's most important in my mind, and I'm gonna go on a little tangent here about this because I think this is incredibly important. Um, we need to differentiate majors from the internationals. So the major's goal is to add stability to the scene, not stagnate it. And the Manila majors showed us this really great production that was equivalent to a TI. So that's something to be afraid of and it had this insanely hyped crowd and of course a wonderful cosplay competition and all of this content, but it still wasn't TI. There was still a distinction between them. Some people rearranged their sleeping schedules for majors, 
but people rearrange their lives for TI. It is this insane culture that the entire world embraces that, that we have to preserve. So we have to keep TI the way it is. So if we look back to Manila, but it was filled for praise, filled with praise for Manila. PGL did this insane job and people said it was the tournament they would compare everything to. Now, TI was great. It broke viewing records. It did a ton of amazing things, but there were fringe sentiments that it was not as good as Manila. It wasn't the main feeling, but isn't it scary to think that one day that might be the main feeling that one day TI isn't that special culmination of talent and ability for the entire year? Imagine this growing player base, right? That, that hasn't been around for forever. Viewer numbers keep going up. Majors go to more countries and more time zones. There's cool hats, there's battle passes. Everything is very accessible and there's this whole new crowd that is not indoctrinated into the TI culture. What makes TI so special for them? What motivates people to defy their time zone? to watch matches at all hours, to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on compendiums and, and raise the prize pool like crazy, get us tons of press to travel around the world just to be able to go. We're all indoctrinated into the Kool-Aid that is TI right now, but as we expand and majors continue to be really impressive and we come up with all these cool new things, doesn't TI then just become another major? Why is TI more special than the major that's in your own country, that's happening in your own time zone? One of Dota's appeals is its uniqueness. The shocking stats, the incredible community passion that we have. So the moment that TI becomes just another major, rather than the year-end festival that celebrates this game that we're obsessed with and we all love, we risk becoming really mundane. Accepting mediocrity for stability is not a trade that Valve is looking to make right now. And, and TI has to remain special. So that's where my, my side rant can, can be pulled back in. Single elimination makes the majors faster paced and they have a different feel. There's less filler content. The games are more relevant for those who are staying up late to watch them or traveling to go see them. And then TI remains this festival and celebration with all the extra elements that we love. And then the majors are just a big tournament, a really big land with a very large budget, but they're not TI. And they matter, but TI is where it's all on the line. So single elimination might feel like it's cost cutting for less days or that it's not giving your favorite team their best chance. But if they can win the tournament from the lower bracket, they should be able to win the tournament from the upper bracket. Why do they need a cushion of a loss in the first place? You already have that in a best of three. If we were to look at the majors that were all double elimination, OG started out in the loser bracket, so they never dropped a series on their way to winning. Secret and then OG again all stayed in the upper bracket. So they also, for uh, Shanghai and Manila, so they didn't drop any series either. So they didn't need the lower bracket either, so single elimination would have worked for them as well. This format helps distinguish majors from TI. And as long as there are proper group stages, it presents fair and competitive results. So there were some issues with Boston, but Valve has demonstrated an ability to adapt. They'll come into Kia with a more meaningful group stages and the team that should win will win, no matter the format.